Ola owns the world's biggest electric scooter manufacturing facility, the Future Factory. Their factory is targeting a future disruption in the market with their recent electric scooter model, Ola S1 Pro. This scooter could easily take over the market with its affordable price and high performance. This machine's peak torque value is an impressive 58 newton meters, and its peak power is 8.5 kilowatts. However, despite these good performance numbers in the company's global plants, this scooter has some serious technical glitches. Will it be able to live up to its hype? Let's explore. The Ola scooter runs on an internal permanent magnet IPM motor. These electric motors have permanent magnets embedded deep inside their iron rotors. The IPM motor is a great choice, as it has high torque to weight ratios. When we compare the IPM motor with the BLDC surface mount motors used in most other e scooters, the IPM motors give higher torque for the same volume because of the additional reluctance torque the IPM's iron rotor provides which is why you get greater acceleration when you start your Ola scooter. The IPM motor requires an AC supply for its stator winding. To supply this power, Ola uses the banana battery pack, which is a collection of tiny cylindrical NCA cells. Obviously, we have to use a three-phase inverter in between to convert the battery's DC supply into an AC supply. A controller is also used in the scooter. Its main duty is to control the frequency of the alternating current. For example, when you accelerate, the controller gets this signal and it commands the inverter to increase the AC current's frequency. The greater the frequency, the greater the IPM motor speed. Let's keep these electronics components inside the scooter. The bulky inverter and the other electronics, that's why you can see such a protruding and irritating part on your last scooter. The controller not only commands the inverter to change its frequency, it is the Ola scooter's brain. The controller handles the scooter's amazing software controls, such as password-enabled driving, navigation, speed modes control, and many other cool features. Now, let's drive this scooter and check for its noise. The Ola scooters are so silent. You won't even notice it. The reason for the noise difference between the Ola and other e-scooters is the transmission. As you can see, the IPM motor is placed in the center of the Ola scooter, and the rotational energy is transferred to the rear tire via belt transmission. This is a single-stage transmission. Other scooters, for example Aether, use a two-stage transmission system to get high torque, so the increased number of gears results in extra noise. Ola can manage with a single speed transmission because the IPM motor inherently gives a good torque output. Have you ever wondered why Ola places the motor in the center and not directly in the tire as a hub motor? The reason is the sprung to unsprung weight ratio. Let's explore this important concept. The sprung weight is simply the weight of components resting over the suspension springs, as shown here whereas the unsprung weight is the weight after the springs. If the ratio of sprung to unsprung weight is high, you get good travel comfort over speed bumps and potholes. Here you can see the motor is a part of the sprung weight. Suppose Ola used a hub motor, which has an in-wheel placement. In that case, the unsprung weight increases and the ratio will decrease, leading to discomfort while you drive. For this reason, the Ola electric scooter uses a mid-drive motor rather than a hub motor. Did you notice something peculiar about this scooter's shock absorber? It is not inclined this way. Rather, it's horizontal. It's called a cantilever suspension, and you can see it clearly here. How do cantilever suspensions work, and why do Ola scooters use them? This cantilever suspension is an advantage for drivers because they get more of the boot space. One end of the suspension is connected to the chassis and the other to a triangular lever. The lever is pivoted at this point. The other end of this lever is connected to the wheel. 
Just by observing these animations, you can see that as the tire moves up and down, the triangular lever rotates and transfers this motion to the shocks. One major issue with the Ola scooter is that when the user tries to drive it on hyper mode, the scooter automatically switches to normal mode after some time due to the heating of the motor and battery. In hyper mode, the motor draws high power for a longer duration and overheats, along with the battery. If this overheating continues, the motor winding may burn and the battery can cause a fire. To avoid this result, a smart battery management system is employed and is integrated with the battery pack itself. This electronic system signals the controller to switch back into normal mode as soon as the battery's temperature goes beyond safe limits. This solution eventually saves the motor as well. This control is particularly important in India's warm environment. One of this bike's coolest features is the regenerative braking, which gives you more range. Here the motor acts as a generator. The braking happens here without any metal-to-metal -metal contact. One interesting braking feature of this scooter is that, just by twisting the throttle in reverse direction, the regen will give you a more intense braking. As soon as you twist the throttle in reverse direction, the smart controller reverses the direction of the stator RMF. This gives the reverse torque to the rotor and the motor comes to a sudden stop. Ola calls this feature a forced regen. In short, the forced regen is equivalent to your hand forcefully stopping a spinning wheel by moving against it. One of the Ola S1 scooter's drawbacks occurs during a hill climb with a pillion passenger. The scooter fails to fulfill the high torque demand required for this situation. Another customer complaint about the scooter is that during normal turns, the handle reaches very close to driver's knees if they are tall, causing discomfort. Additionally, the S1 Pro model recently had a fire incident, and government officials are investigating the root cause. Please check the video from Plug in India to learn about some of the other issues of the scooter. All these concerns have obviously reduced public enthusiasm around the scooter. Many of you know that the Ola electric scooter was actually the app scooter of a Netherland-based company, Etergo. The app scooter was designed for European roads in Europe's 17 degrees Celsius summer temperatures. Ola's owner, Mr. Bavish, had to make huge modifications in the scooter's design to make it viable for India's bumpy roads in summer temperatures of up to 40 degrees Celsius. They spent a whole one year to redesign the scooter for the Indian conditions. One year of R&D is obviously insufficient to effectively achieve these adaptations. We hope with one more year of effort, the company can deliver a top-notch, affordable electric scooter. Ola even has plans to release this scooter in the global market. To get a complete picture of the Ola scooter's other engineering achievements and additional drawbacks, please check this detailed video from Plugin India. We hope you liked this video. Thank you.